particular state of Jammu and Kashmir was an exception. And the exception was constitutionally grafted in Article 370. You can't jettison the people of the, of the, of the state of Jammu and Kashmir and decide that there is, then what's the difference between this and whether it's the act of the crown? What's the difference between this and the annexation of Junagadh? Assistant of Constituent Assembly of the state. Yeah. If sub Article 3, yes. according to you, yes. has become non existent, cease to operative, yes. then how the very temporary nature of Article 370 will survive? That's why, because it's temporary, because the Constituent Assembly had not been f f uh, framed, but at that point in time, had not been constituted in 1950 when this provision was added in the Constitution. No, if sub Article 3 goes, then that means Article 370 can never be abrogated. Yes, that's the whole point, Miller. That is our case. Then how it is temporary? It is temporary because when this article was framed, Miller, there was no constituent assembly. It was the constituent assembly which could have taken the decision that we will abrogate 370 and merge completely with the Union of India like any other state. Mr. Sibyl, your contention, if I have understood you correctly, is that the temporary nature of 370 is correlatable to the constituent life assembly. The constituent assembly. Life. That's, that's my and, uh, uh, in a way, uh, sub clause 3 becomes OTOs once the Constituent Assembly ceases to exist. Correct. This is your contention. My contention. From, from 51 to 57, it is temporary. I your lordship to the Constituent Assembly, they, they, they say the same thing. Mr. Ayanga, they say the same thing. What I am saying, Malak. I am just trying to phrase it as I understand. I, 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 I am clear that. Your lordships have understood it, and I also understand your lordships, what your lordships are thinking, Malak. So I have to respond to it. According to it, it is temporary between 51 to 57. That's correct. And thereafter, permanent. The reason is simple, Malak. All constituent assemblies are temporary. It is there no permanence in a constituent assembly. So and when you. Role is limited to framing the constitution. Yes. Therefore, Malat, if it is temporary by its nature, which is why I started by saying this is a political exercise. A, that's why I Malat, started with that summation before your lordships. A the formation of a constituent assembly is a political exercise to ensure that be people within the territory of a particular region, their aspirations are taking into account to formulate a law and a constitution to ensure that those aspirations are met in future times to come. This is not, this is not a, it's not a lawmaking exercise. Then they, they, then they frame the constitution to take into account those aspirations. That's how our republic came into force. Because there was the 1935 act, there was diversity. Well, let's kindly look at it historically. Let's not forget the law for the moment. Look at it historically. If you look at Europe, and the making of the nation states in Europe. How did that happen? It happened because there were large empires, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Prussian Empire. And well, as those large empires had communities and, and, and within those empires, there were peoples of different languages, of different cultures, of different ethnic lot. So it is the breakup of the empire that led to the rise of the nation state, the Treaty of Utrecht the 1848 revolutions, right? In India, the, 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 the process was the opposite. It's the only exception. The process was just the opposite. There was disparity. There were existing disparities. There were 562 princely states. There were states of, 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 which, are, which, are, which were part of the British crown. They had to be amalgamated. And each of them others had certain conditions. But then ultimately they all agreed, okay, for the states that were part of 562, all agreed. But this particular state of Jammu and Kashmir was an exception. And the exception was constitutionally engrafted in Article 370. And the terms of the exception were constitutionally engrafted in 370. You can't jettison the people of the, of, the, of the state of Jammu and Kashmir and decide that there is, then what's the difference between this and whether it's the act of the crown? What's the difference between this and the annexation of Junagadh? Or the annexation of Hyderabad? Then it's an act of paramountcy that I am the union and I will decide. When you have constitutionally 
well as committed yourself that if this is to be done, you have to follow a process which two sovereign authorities have agreed upon and it grafted in Article 370. Otherwise, Malad, then, then, then it's exercise of paramount power. When the assimilative exercise carried out, uh, your submission, I understand, is JNK is an exception because a temporary provision was created for a period of time, and after that, it is engrafted permanently into the constitution. Because you can't revive the constituent assembly. I'm just saying. What yes. is? That's what my submission. I appreciate, Malad, your lordship, the fully. Uh, understood what I'm trying to say. What, 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 what is it that we are, you have a state of Jammu and Kashmir with today 14 million people. At that time, mother, they were much less. They have no, they have no uh, uh, role to play in their own faith. They have no role to play. If in 1950 it was part of the union, there would be no issue. The aspirations, the desires of the people, whatever it is, Mother. After all, this was something that also had international repercussions at that point in time. If an elected assembly would want to abrogate 370, even that is not possible. Not possible. Not possible. That is why they had to, Mother, do these things in the manner that they did. But the only way we can reach to that conclusion is by saying that. Once the period for the uh, work of the Constituent Assembly of the state comes to an end, then what is essentially a temporary provision assumes a permanent character in the Constitution. But that, yes, you know, not to be that. Except but, if we are, but if that hypothesis is not accepted, then the only basis on which you can really, you know, place your petitions here is that by asserting that a pre-Constitution compact, which was entered into between an independent state, yes and a state in which it has merged, so to speak, is enforceable, irrespective of what the legislative power of the merging state is. Because Malad, the legislative power, both of the parliament here, cannot override Malad, the, 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 the powers under 356 of the constitution. Because what has been used is 356. There is no such power by the, under 356 that can Malad, take over. Oh, can an independent state, which accepts the sovereignty of another state, unconditionally, still say that, well, uh, if the parliament of that state to which we have assumed uh, the, the sovereignty of uh, is still restrained in terms of the original compact. <laughs> well, it's unconditional, Malas. It's unconditional. And apart from, forget about that. Can parliament of India, Malas, parliament of India, in the context of its responsibilities and powers under the constitution of India, do an act beyond 356? Can't. There are very complex issues that your lordships will have to decide. This power is exercised under 356. How is that can be exercised under 356? 356 itself is a temporary power. What are you trying to say is to me? Well, what you are saying, you see, it means even, let us say, a hypothesis that the will of the people is to abrogate it, yes. which is reflected by an assembly elected. Yes. You are saying even that scenario, it cannot be done. Trying to understand the consequence would be even then it can't be done. But that would be a political act then, Malik. So I would I would say that if that situation arises, it would be a political act. That's not been done, but be that as it may. Malik, can you kindly look at it from this point of view? 356 itself is a temporary provision. What's the purpose of 366? To restore democracy. Is the is the intention behind the 356 position, which is a temporary provision to 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 decimate democracy? 